What is going on, everybody? This is Justin Daniel, and thank you for tuning into the channel. The channel is Justin Daniel Finance, and if you're new here, you know the drill. Go ahead and hit the like and hit the subscribe button if you like quality videos about great stocks and making money in the stock market. All right, so it's been a minute since I've dropped a video, but today I have one on a company that I think is really fantastic. And it's a company that is currently within my top 10 largest holdings, but I think that it's gonna be coming close to the top five because I have been adding regularly, and I really do like what the company is doing, and I really do like the growth potential for this company. So if you're interested in something like that, please do stick around all the way till the end, and again, please do hit the like and the subscribe button to help me grow my subscribers, and uh, please enjoy today's video. So the company that I'm gonna talk about today is called MP Materials, and the ticker symbol is MP. And it may or may not be a company that some of you are familiar with out there, but it's a really great company. Um, and before I get too deep into the analysis of why I do think it's a great company, let's take a little look at the price action and what it's currently trading at. So um, the stock is currently trading at $37.62. And if we look at the five day, um, we see that it's up about 5.79%. And if we look at it year to date, we see it's up almost uh, 30% or over 29%. So it has been performing pretty well well this year, I would have to say, up 30% on the year to date. And me personally, I'm in at about a dollar cost average of $33 per share. So at the $33 per share, I personally am up about 14%. So all in all, not too shabby, but it is one that I plan to hold for quite a while because I do think it has a lot of growth and it's in a very exciting kind of you know area that not a lot of other companies are. So let's talk about that. So what is MP Materials? The only rare earth mining company in the Western Hemisphere. So let me say that again, the only rare earth mining to scale uh, in the Western Hemisphere. And right now, we rely on China for about 80 to 90% of rare earth. And that is potentially a problem because when you have a supply chain that's all coming from one place, you know, that is a single point of failure as the company does point out. And that's always a risk to have a product or a material coming directly from one source. And you know, that's particularly true of something that's just as important to modern technology as rare earth. Okay, and so for some of you that don't know what rare earth is, so rare earths are fundamental building blocks of the modern economy, enabling trillions of dollars global GDP via a wide range of clean energy, information technology, defense and industrial applications. And Mountain Pass is one of the richest deposits of rare earth elements in the world. In fact, today, MP Materials produces a concentrate of about 15% of the rare earth uh, that's currently consumed. So you can see, you know, that's pretty cool uh, to have 15% and being the only one on the Western Hemisphere really does, you know, mean something. Now, if we look at the facility, the Mountain Pass Mine contains more than 800,000 tons of recoverable rare earth. Okay, so that's pretty great. I mean, this is a very large, I mean, 800,000 tons. That is a lot of rare earth. And so you can see that this is really an operations that is of large scale. And where they are now is pretty impressive. Rare earths, I mean, you can see that it's involved with a lot of things from, you know, electric vehicles to clean energy to military, um, communications, electric motors, digital technologies. They've got all these applications and areas that rare earth is needed. So you can see, even though rare earth may not be something that's on the top of everybody's minds, it's kind of like a pick and shovels play because all of these different technologies, which are clearly the emerging technologies of our day and age, are uh, reliant on rare earth to produce these, you know, that's just a great space to be in if you ask me. So this is pretty neat. I like what they say here, um, how we're helping. And it says, MP Materials aims to bring a robust, environmentally conscious, rare earth supply chain back to the US. Our materials are the building blocks for high strength magnets, which are critical to carbon reducing technologies like electric vehicles and wind turbines. 
So I love it when a company has, you know, within their mission, something that's good, you know, for, in this case, it's good for the country and for the world to not just have China being the only, you know, essentially producer of rare earth, but rare earth, as they know, is used for, you know, wind turbines and electric vehicles and these things that are going to help decarbonize the world, which I think is a goal the world is aiming for, and, you know, rightfully so. So I think that that's wonderful. Okay, so let's take a minute just to watch a brief clip directly from the MP Materials website, uh, because I think it is a pretty good clip worth watching. Nikola Tesla once said, a thousand years hence, the telephone and the motion picture camera may be obsolete, but the principle of the rotating magnetic field will remain a vital living thing for all time to come. These Prussian words ring true today more than ever. Magnetics is synonymous with motion in modern life. It is the magnet inside the motor that makes your electric vehicle drive. It is the magnet inside the turbine that turns wind into energy. It is the magnet inside the drone that fuels its dance in the sky. It is the magnet inside the robot that precisely guides it across the assembly line, around a farm, or throughout your home. It is the magnet inside the MRI that creates the namesake magnetic field. And it is the magnet inside the mysterious and in some cases not yet developed defense technologies that keep us safe. It is the magnet inside that matters. And therefore, our lives increasingly rely on magnets and the special ingredients inside the most powerful and efficient magnets, rare earth materials. So that was a pretty good clip, and I just want to show one more real briefly, but kind of putting in their own words as to why it is so important to have rare earth mining in the United States. Well, right now there's a single point of failure in the rare earth industry, and that's particularly crucial in the production of magnets, which are critical to so many you know, modern technologies and military applications. The fact that 80 to 90 percent of that is produced in China right now means the U.S. economy is dependent upon the single source of failure, which no matter where that is, that provides unacceptable risks. China is very good at operating in you know, low cost, competitive industries. They have you know, all the infrastructure around that to support it. They also have a nationwide commitment to being leaders in this industry. America led this industry for decades with this site right here at Mountain Pass. But due to cost of capital subsidies overseas in China, as well as different environmental standards, we lost our leadership and this site fell into essentially disrepair and bankruptcy. You know, when I think about my job and why it's so important and why, I, why I'm excited every single day, it's because I'm actually getting to be a small part in what it means to restore things right back here to Mountain Pass. So that sums it up pretty nicely. And as you can see here, um, CNBC was actually just recently at the MP Materials uh, Mountain Pass site and kind of making the point that the Pentagon is getting pressure uh, to convert over to US-based rare earth material mining. Um, so I mean, that only just bodes well for MP Materials uh, and the future growth. So here's another Seeking Alpha article that says MP Materials is the shovel of the EV gold rush. And that kind of is like what I mentioned earlier, you know, the picks and the shovels play, which means, you know, you don't want to be the ones mining the gold. You want to be the ones selling the picks and the shovels to everybody who was in the gold rush mining the gold. Um, and, you know, this is the new EV gold rush. There's going to be some winners and there's going to be some losers and those that produce the electric vehicles. Uh, but you know what? They're all going to need this material. And right now, being the only mining facility, again, just setting up for so much growth and so much success in the future. So if we were to take a look at the analyst price targets, and I know some people don't put too much stock into price targets and analyst ratings, you know, but I like to look at it to see, you know, who's saying what the targets are and what they're, you know, forecasting for the stock price uh, in the near term future. And we can see right here from MarketBeat that we have buys. So we have a buy rating with a consensus price of about over $39 per share. So not a ton of upside from where it currently is, although it is upside. So that's good. Um, but if we look at like the most two recent uh, coverage initiations, we can see here that they initiated 
negotiated coverage with the buy and an outperform, both coming in with the $45 price target. And that was in July and in late June, so not too long ago. And, uh, you know, that's pretty good. $45 from the current price of 37 I mean, this is not a 200% type of return in a year being forecasted based on the analyst price targets, but it is some upside, some pretty decent double-digit upside. And again, if you're thinking about it long-term and not just, hey, this is a swing trade, but long-term, how much is the company really going to grow? I think there's a lot more upside potential than just the $45 price target in the near term. So I would say that earnings are coming up here this week. Uh, today is August 1st that I'm filming this, and I think they're doing it on August 5th, if I recall correctly, but it's upcoming this week. And, you know, I don't know what, what the earnings are going to be reported. Uh, nobody knows what the earnings are, uh, unless you're on an, an insider. Um, but my personal take is that a lot of times, even if a company does have good earnings, you know, the price action can still go down. So I don't really have any guidance as far as, you know, do you want to get in before the earnings report this week? If you're not already, you know, in the stock and you don't already have a position, do you want to get in now? You know, that's hard to say because, you know, earnings can be unpredictable, both in terms of what actually gets reported, as well as future guidance, as well as how the market reacts to that. So, you know, I mean, I'm going to continue buying um, the dips. When I see it down a little bit on any kind of a red day, I uh, come in and swoop up a few more shares. You know, that's just how I play it. But I would, if I were, you know, forced to guess, I think that there might be a buying opportunity after earnings. So, you know, that's just my take. I never give guidance in terms of, you know, um, advice. I never say, hey, this is my advice. You should go out and do what I say because, you know, this is for entertainment purposes only and I'm not an advisor and everyone should always do your own due diligence. You know, of course, that's the standard uh, disclaimer. But, you know, with that said, like, I, I really do think this is a great company. I don't think uh, it's going to be a disappointing stock in the long run if you're looking to hold it for several years, you know, five to ten years even. I think this is one that's going to be a home run. You know, that's just my take. And a lot of these stocks that I do videos, that's what I think. I, I want to think about the long term, you know, several years, not just, hey, what's on the next few months on the horizon for a swing trade. I think, hey, can this company continually show impressive growth in their earnings uh, year over year, quarter over quarter? And if the answer is yes, then I like to load up and buy the dips and continue purchasing and dollar cost averaging uh, as the market uh, moves forward. So that's my take. That's MP Materials. That's what I think about it. Um, think it's a great company doing great things to make, you know, rare earth mining relevant in the United States and make our country less reliant on China. Uh, but the less that any, you know, supply chain is coming from essentially one place or two places, uh, that's just all for the good for everybody. So, you know, that's my take. That's kind of philosophical, but specific to the company of MP, they are doing it and they have impressive uh, growth potential in the future. So that's why I'm an investor. So, hey, everybody, if you like the video, do me a favor again. Let me know with the comments. Let me know with the subscribe because that's really what I'm looking for to continue building this channel is to get up that subscriber base. So it would be greatly appreciated, but, you know, only do it if you think you're going to get value or if you enjoy watching videos about these kind of stuff. Stocks. And by the way, this um, this coverage was the result of a comment from my last video. So, you know, definitely a shout out to everyone who kind of follows and, and comments. It's much appreciated. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching through to the end. So until next time, you know, this is Justin Daniel Finance. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And I hope we all make some money in the stock market. And until next time, take care.